I get these questions every now and then about omegas or other PAC status designations. I've done tons of content trying to make what we witnessed on the show fit into what we were told about PAC status in this universe. Despite all that, what we actually saw happen to these characters in no way reflects the idea that PAC status is actually some big deal. So let's be really honest about it. The only status that actually matters is Alpha. It's the only one that comes with obvious perks like making new werewolves. All the other PAC status stuff is well, it, it's like racism. It's all made up. It's a bunch of rules that somebody made up so they could feel superior to somebody else. That is where my head is now. But I tried super hard for many years to make it work the way the writers of this show and the characters in this show said it should work. The following video was my most epic attempt and... Looking back now, a lot of it seems kind of stupid. To start, we're going back to the very beginning. <laughs> According to Jeff Davis, human teens have packs already. I like the idea that these packs, I think it's a good, it's a good example story for teenagers to hear that you can be accepted into a pack just because of the person you are and not because of your yeah not because of your social status not because of your blood relations so just by being a good person it's the family you have and the one you make with your close friends or some combination of the two dead body no a body of water yes dumbass a dead body in the beginning scott's pack was styles his mom and probably styles dad because the boys were so close they all looked out for each other. I mean, Melissa called Stilinski the night Scott's dad knocked him down the stairs. They're close, and there is obviously love from each of them towards Scott. That's his pack when the show starts, and his status in his human pack is solidly beta. I mean, Melissa is obviously in charge. Of that, there is no doubt. Then we get into the bite and actually becoming a werewolf, and with that came this expectation that Scott had assumed some sort of werewolf status. We even have Derek trying to explain it to him. You and I were betas. This thing is more powerful, more animal than either of us. But we now know that's not true. While Derek might still consider himself part of a pack with his comatose uncle and therefore consider himself a beta, I don't think Scott is part of a pack at all, and therefore is not technically a beta as we now understand it. Also, Derek is always hail pack from here on out. He's definitely an ally to the McCall pack, but even after he gave up alpha status, he's got his own thing going on with Peter and Cora. He helped Scott and is as close to Scott as many of Scott's pack members, but if the definitions mean anything at all, he's never actually in the McCall pack. Back to season one. Soon after the bite, I no longer count Scott's mom or Stalinsky, or Allison for that matter, as part of his pack because there is a damaged trust bond there. Scott is holding on to a secret, and without trust, the bond of the pack is broken. We saw that happen later in season five when Theo went around undermining Scott and the pack broke up and Scott got all weak due to the lack of support. So, knowing that that's how it goes down when the trust is gone, I look back down. at season one and see Scott struggling with a whole bunch of lies to the most important people in his life. That says to me that the McCall pack is just Styles and him. That might still be a pack since there's no hard and fast rules on membership numbers, but I don't think it's a pack, and therefore, in my mind, Scott can't be a beta at this point. This is reinforced by the fact that Scott successfully resists Peter's attempts at controlling him at the school, 
and then rejects Peter to his face when he and Derek ambush Scott in the shower. We really just want to help you reach your full potential. By killing my friends. Sometimes the people closest to you can be the ones holding you back the most. If they're holding me back from becoming a psychotic nut job like you, I'm okay with that. And while we had not yet heard the term at this point in the series, I don't actually believe Scott is an Omega either. As a side note, canonically, the first mention of the Omega werewolf comes in episode six of the web series Search for a Cure, which is taking place around the midpoint of the first season. When I connected the woman to the werewolf myth. Anyway, I don't think Scott is a lone wolf, but he also doesn't have a pack as it is defined. So he's not technically part of a pack, but still has family and friends, so he's not alone either. Therefore, since he's not alone, he can't be considered an Omega. We're not just Betas anymore, we're Omegas, the bitches, remember? But wait, the twins were considered Omegas, and they had each other. Up here. That's right, but otherwise, they were on their own. They killed everyone that they could have possibly turned to for support, except maybe for their abusive former leader, Deucalion. But that was apparently not an option for them. Without some kind of support structure, a werewolf is definitely an Omega. Scott, on the other hand, he has friends. Only one ride or die pack member friend in Styles, but he has a full support system including mentors in his mom, Stalinsky, and Deaton, and a strong partner in Allison. Again, he's lying to them, so they're not technically in the pack, but they're still with him when he needs support. In my mind, for these few weeks after the bite, I don't think Scott fits any of the definitions for werewolf status provided by the show. That weird limbo eventually changes the night of their fight with Peter, that's the night Allison really joins the pack. Why should you do that? Once the truth is out and she decides to stay with him anyway, you've got Scott, Stiles, and Allison, and that's what I consider the McCall pack at this point. And, as I understand it, even without an alpha, they are, all three, considered betas because they're in a pack. You want to tell them what we've caught? An Omega. The Lone Wolf. Possibly kicked out of his own pack. Or the survivor of a pack that was hunted down. Jeff did a whole episode about it, and Scott is actually called an Omega by Derek at this point. This is why you need me. Why we need each other. The only way to fight them is together. But I think that's just werewolf bigotry. I don't think Derek initially recognizes humans as pack members. His attitude apparently changes as we get deeper into season two. It's still just the three of them, but now Derek declares Scott to be an alpha of his own pack. I think I'm finally getting why you keep refusing me, Scott. You're not an Omega. You're already an alpha of your own pack. We know physically that's not how it works, but he's definitely leading a little pack. I'll promise not to say anything about what just happened. If you can tell me what the hell just happened? Then, about two and a half months after the bite, Lydia is brought into the fold. Allison had to read her in on the supernatural elements to get her help with the bestiary after the whole Jackson is a lizard thing. And by the start of season three, she's fully in the pack and helping at every turn. Still, as we understand it, all these folks are betas. Now, Scott is the leader, and in all things but eye color, he is the alpha. He's still not technically an alpha, as the show would come to define the status, but he's definitely in charge of these three betas. So yeah, if you didn't watch all the way through that, I think the only thing in there I believe now is that a werewolf pack in the Teen Wolf universe is a friend group or a friend and family group. I refer to friends as chosen family. That's what a pack is about in this universe. It's not some cosmic thing. There's, there's no membership card or leather gang jackets that come with it. All that stuff about Omegas being weak, they're not weak. All the stuff about a pack requiring a red-eyed alpha to be a true pack, that's not real either. Scott proved it, and then Derek certified the result. An alpha is just that one friend that takes the lead. 
that could be the moral center of the group or the troublemaker in the group, depending on what kind of friends you have. Either way, a pack is just friends and family. It's not some magical status, no matter how much the people living in the Teen Wolf universe might want it to be.